squeeze out of it myself. So in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and the Bible said, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south. And Ziglag, and had invaded the south and Ziglag, and smitten Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great nor small, but carried them away, and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives, and their sons, and their daughters were taken captives. My, my. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinanam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And the, and, and Abathar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I'll stop right there. Let's pray one more time. I get our mind on the Lord this morning, that God be able to give the increase. Our Father in heaven, Lord, you see me as I bow before you today. I, I thank you for everything you've done for us up to this point, God. But and now I'm looking for another blessing, God. I don't want to be greedy, but I need to hear from heaven, God. I need to know that you're right there uh, with us, not to leave us, not to forsake us, uh, but going with us to the very end. God, I pray that uh, you go with every one of us through the, the remainder of this service all the way to the end of it. Father, I pray that you give us strength, to, uh, give our mind a stability, Lord, that maybe we haven't had this past week, God, and, and give us courage, Lord, to keep fighting uh, the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name, uh, we pray together. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the uh, reading and reverence of God's Word this morning. And uh, maybe a thought that God began to uh, put in my heart. Maybe yesterday I was trying to uh, think through the Sunday school lesson a little bit and, and trying to think maybe what God would have me to bring this morning and, and really got a little bit excited about what God wants to bring and, and wanting to restore us just a little bit. Maybe uh, something the world has taken from you. But uh, my thought this morning, if I had a text, uh, it'd be that belongs to me. Amen. Uh, that belongs to me. And David began to, uh, maybe he was with the Philistines and I'll, I'll try to lay a foundation a little bit. Uh, uh, maybe you've read this before, but uh, David trying to join himself to the uh, Philistines and they said, uh, uh, we can't have him here. We, uh, we can't have this man uh, fighting with us. Uh, uh, we're afraid he's going to come in and, and maybe try to kill us, trying to be maybe a, a spy. So they said, uh, go back to your home. We don't, we don't want you here anymore. So as David went back to his home, a uh, uh, zigzag and where everybody was at, uh, he found it different than he left it, friend. Praise the Lord. He found it different than he left it. Somebody had stole something that belonged to him. Uh, somebody had taken something uh, that belonged to all of them. Praise God. And the Bible said that they was overwhelmed and, and they was full of sorrow. Amen. Uh, something was taken from them. Uh, do you know, friend, I begin to look at the church of America and I begin to look at the church here, friend. And you know what Satan has tried to do? He's tried to rob you of your joy. He's tried to rob you of your peace. He's tried to rob you of your happiness. But it belongs to you, friend. God said you could be happy. Amen. He said, be, oh, I've overcome the world. He said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Uh, but the world would love to rob you of that. It belongs to you, friend. God give that to you. The happiness that you deserve, God give that to you. Amen. The, the smile on your face. How long has it been since you smiled? How long has it been since I smiled knowing that God saved me? God give me a smile. Amen. And the world didn't give me that smile. I may have snirked a little bit and I may have been a little sarcastic when I was in the world, but God give you that smile. And you know, David smiled a lot, but I don't believe he was smiling here. Amen. And he comes back to his home and something's missing. Amen. His two wives are missing. His children are missing. 
them. All the animals are made. Everything's been taken from them. That's what the, the enemy loved to do for you. In John 10, 10, I already uh, said it this morning. The enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy, friend. He wants to take everything you got. He wants to rob you of everything you got. Amen. But God said it belongs to you. You know what we need to do today? Stand flat-footed. Praise God in our backbone pure and say, God, that belongs to me. The devil can't take that from me. The relationship with your husband, God give that to you. The relationship with your wife, God give that to you. And the enemy wants to rob you of it. Amen. Does he not? Can I get an amen right there? I know the world you're living in. That Praise God. Satan would love to take things that God give you. And when you got saved, did you have a smile on your face? Hey, God give it back to you, did he not? And when you got saved, did you have a smile and thank God for what he done for you, for keeping you out of a devil's hell? Do we still have that smile? Or has the world robbed us of that? Amen. I say, stand up and say, that's mine. Give it back. Amen. It's mine. Give it back. God said I can have that. I'm glad David, oh Lord. And the Bible said he was so low. How many times do you get so low looking around at what you used to have? The joy you used to have when you thought about it Saturday night. You was excited. I about looked at my wife last night and said, I wish we could go to church now. I wish we could go right now. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. And last night about 1130, I started to feel the Lord's Spirit. I was thinking, my I'd like to go to church, but it ain't always been like that. God give it back to me, friend. Uh, for about two months, I told some of you, uh, for about two months, I felt so dry. I was still reading my Bible. I was still trying to do everything I could to proclaim the gospel. But you know what? I was missing something. There was still something missing inside of me. I don't know what it was. I still ain't figured it out, but you know what? Praise God. God give it back to me. God, whatever it was that the world robbed of me, the joy that I couldn't walk around, happy that I was saved, God give that back to me. And he did my brother this morning too. Amen. It belongs to you, friend. And the praise God, the joy of the Lord. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Hey, you know what the Bible says? We go from strength to strength. I tell you today, friend, could be a day of strength for you if you proclaim that belongs to you. Don't let the world rob you of your smile. How many Christians you know walking around, I don't care how long they've been saved, and they walk around, they're so sour. Why would anybody want what they got? Why would anybody want what they got? I don't surely don't. I want something's going to make me happy. And praise God, I believe Brother Ronnie used to say, if your salvation don't make you happy, you got the wrong kind. Praise God. Mine makes me happy, friend. It makes me love everybody. Glory to His name. Hey, it belongs to you. And can you say today underneath your breath, that belongs to me. Hey, something Satan stole from you. You can't sit and talk to your spouse no more. You can't talk to your children no more. Satan has robbed you of that. It belongs to you, friend. God didn't come to bring division among your family. God didn't bring, come to bring division among the church. Amen. That's Satan. Hey, Satan's the one who does that. And David, oh Lord, so low. And you know what was even worse about that? If my wife gets low, the worst thing I can do is bite her head off. Here David he is feeling so depressed, so discouraged, and everybody's coming against him. It said they wanted to stone him. Praise God. Ain't that the way the devil works? About the time you get low estate, about the time you feel like giving up, Satan comes in like a roaring lion. Oh, what would have been if David would have just crawled in a hole and said, oh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do. All my friends don't like me no more. Praise God. Get a new set. Amen. You know what? I said it a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago. If they don't want to be my friend, I don't care. I got enough friends. I don't need no new ones. Amen. I got enough of them. And praise God, if David was right there in that place and they wanted to stone him, that's just like what the devil wanted to do. Wanted to discourage David. Wanted to tell him it's all his fault. Ain't that what Satan does? When you ain't smiling no more, he says it's your fault. It's your fault that you're not smiling no more. It's your fault because you did this and you did that. You know what? He's an accuser of the brethren, the Bible said, but it belongs to you, friend. And David had to encourage himself in the Lord. Do you ever need to encourage yourself in the Lord? Praise God. He's greater, friend. Hey, he's greater than your trial is today. And bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my sorrows, bigger than all my fears. Amen. You sang that song before. It belongs to you, friend. Don't you let Satan rob you of that. Don't you let him rob you what God gives you. He give you the peace of mind. Praise God. When he came to that room and Thomas said, I'll not believe it's him unless I take my finger and put it in the hole of his hand and take my hand and thrust it in his side. Ain't that the way he was? Have you been like that before? God, I don't know. I'm getting off a week of faith. I know you saved me and I felt a little excitement. Maybe I felt my hair stand up on the back of my neck, but there's something wrong. Hey, something, you know what? When he came in, he said, peace. Hey, Amen. Ain't you glad when God sends his son in the room? He says, peace. I'd say it wasn't very long after that. I hadn't read it in the Bible nowhere and I'm not speculating. I'm just talking how man lives. I'm sure it wasn't very long after that, amen, uh, that that peace tried to drain out of him. 
Amen. Somebody tried to rob Thomas of that peace he had. You know what the world's trying to rob from you? The peace that God gives you. Don't try to keep up with the world, friend. If you try to keep up with the world, you're going to find yourself with no peace. Amen. I'm not of this world. I'm not in this world. I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. Amen. God's called me out of that, and he's called you out of it, friend. I don't have to compete with the world no more. I don't have to compete with the Joneses no more, friend. All I want to do is to be happy with a smile on my face. God wants you to be happy. Amen. I'm not no, no uh, prospering. I thought, Lord, if I'm talking about this, they're going to think I'm talking about a prospering message. I'm not talking about prospering and having more and all that. That's a headache. But God wants you to be happy, friend. I'm not talking about he's going to give you the desires of your flesh. He's not going to give you the desires so you can have a prettier car or so everybody can look on it. Or you'll have prettier hair. Or you praise God, your nails will be pretty than anybody else's. Or your beard will be better than anybody else's. I'm not talking about the flesh, friend. But God wants you to be happy in your heart. He wants you to be content. Oh, God. Godly with my contentment is what? Is great gain, the Bible said. Godliness with contentment, friend. I want to be content. Our brother told us last week. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You know what? God wants you to be happy, friend. God wants you to joy. The Lord is my strength. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you got joy this morning? Has Satan robbed you of it? Has your job robbed you of it? There's been times, I'll be honest with you, praise God. I don't care who hears this. There's times my job takes my joy from me. There's times it gives me joy. But there's times if I let it, it'll take my joy from me. There's times that relationship with different people robs me of my joy. You know why? Because I let it. But you, oh Lord, God, joy belongs to me. Can you say it today in your heart? Joy belongs to you. Hey, don't follow after me, but I'm telling you, joy belongs to you. A smile on your face belongs to you. How long has it been since you've been happy about the gospel? Amen. David found himself so low. Everybody coming against him, and that's the way it is. That old song said, kick them while they're down, kick them while they're up. That's the way Satan is. When he sees you get just a little bit sore, he sees you get just a little bit weak, he comes in, my, my. It seems like he comes in and pours all the hounds of hell out on you, and you feel like you're overwhelmed. David was overwhelmed, but he still had something inside of his heart. And the Bible said he encouraged. He encouraged. You know, he wasn't getting it from nobody else. Praise the Lord. He wasn't getting it from nobody else. These times, friend, you feel like you're in a corner, and ain't nobody else around loves you. Ain't nobody else around cares about you, but David found something inside of his heart and he encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes we got to do that. I can't pick myself up by my own bootstraps. I know that. But I can't encourage myself in the Lord. I can be reminded of what he's done for me, Brother Mike. I can be reminded that I can smile and be happy that I don't have to go to hell no more. You think that preach? You ain't got to go to hell, my friend. God's made a way for you and you can smile all the way there. There's been a lot of things. Praise the Lord. I found out I had to do, really didn't want to do it, and I surely didn't smile all the way there. I believe we can smile all the way to heaven. You say you never had no trial? Yeah, I got some trials. Amen, and you got it too. But when I get to that lowest state, I'm reminded of what David did when he encouraged himself in the Lord. How long has it been? Now, the devil wants you to have a pity party. He's really good about convincing me to do that. I'm good. If you don't know how, I'll tell you how to do it. I probably got a five-step program to tell you how to do it. But God don't want you to have a pity party. Amen, things could be worse in your life. Amen. And you could not even have a coat on your back today. You could not have a house to go home to. It could be a whole lot worse. And the devil like to get you to look at them things. So your joy gets robbed out. Love belongs to you, my friend. Love that you share. He said, they'll know you're my disciples. Why? Because you hate one another. Because you throw rocks at one another. No. He said, because you love one another. They'll know you're my disciples, friend. The world will know there's something different. As David encouraged himself in the Lord. And when he finally encouraged himself in the Lord, he got to a point where he could pray. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I can't just go straight to praying. I, when I got a, a trial going on, maybe you can do it. Bless your lovely heart. But when I got a deep trial going on, I can't always get down on my knee. You say you shouldn't be like that. Well, bless your heart. I just can't do it sometimes, friend. I can't pray for myself. I can pray for you, but I can't get down and pray for me. But when I get to that lowest state, as David encouraged himself, and he got to a point, he said, God, shall I pursue? Shall I pursue what's been taken from me? Shall I pursue what's been taken from my whole family? What's been taken? taken from this whole village, what's been taken from all my army, all the soldiers, shall I pursue? Ain't you glad God said pursue? He said pursue and you not fail. You gather all these things back. I come to tell you today, friend, if you pursue after these things and seek God, He'll give you your joy back. Oh, Lord, how many times do you go to church? You ain't got no more joy than a rattlesnake. I ain't either. Sometimes we go to church out of a tradition. We 
go to church this out of a, a maybe something we're supposed to do, but there ain't no joy in my heart. I'm just going so you say the preacher showed up today. But thank God for the times that I encouraged myself. Thank God for the time when I said, Lord, shall I pursue it again? Every Sunday, praise God, every Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday and Wednesday, I say, God, shall I pursue? He says, pursue. Pursue, it don't belong to him, friend. Your joy don't belong to the devil. Your joy, your smile don't belong to the devil. What has he robbed you of this week? Amen. You know, sometimes, I've seen this before, when somebody comes in to steal, they don't always take a whole lot. If they want to come back, oh, Lord, help me here. If they want to come back, they'll just take a little bit, they won't they? You know, if you've got a thief in your house that's living with you, uh, somebody that you know, they won't just take all your money the first day. They'll take, my dad, he, he laughs about this, but when I lived with him, he had this big quarter jar. He, he had a, a big, great big quarter jar. And he said, I can tell when you and your sister been over, he said, there's a scoop full of quarters gone. He said, I knew exactly whose hand it was. I could tell there's a scoop full of quarters. He always kept it rounded up. And he said, I never could get that thing to fall out. He said, I knew when y'all had been there. See, I didn't come to get a whole lot, just a little bit. That's what Satan would love to do with you, my friend. He don't come and take everything at one time. He just takes your joy. First, he takes your smile. Amen. You've seen somebody that used to be so full of the Lord. you see them smile. It doesn't matter what trial they're going through. Praise God, that's beside the point. But they just take a little bit. That's what Satan does, friend. He don't usually just come in and wipe you out. He starts real small. He takes your smile away from you. He takes your joy away from you. He takes your desire to read your Bible away from you. Praise God, He takes your desire to testify. He takes your desire to tell anybody about the Lord. There's been times I thought, Lord, I'm not going to the store. I'm not going to the store. There's chances I'm going to see somebody, and my faith is so weak right now. God, how can I tell anybody about you with joy? <laughs> oh, Lord, now I've been guilty of just not going, just doing without. Just you ask my wife, I don't like going in the store sometimes. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to be fake. I want to be real. But you know what? Praise God. If you catch that thief before he steals everything, you can't ask him to leave. <laughs> Through the power of God, you can tell him you don't belong here no more. Hey, you ain't got permission. Give me back those keys. You don't belong here. Does that remind you of something? Praise the Lord. When God to Jesus hung on that cross and the Bible said when he gave up the ghost three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, he came back with what? Those keys belong to him. Praise the Lord. Those keys he took belong to him. They didn't belong to Satan, but nobody else was worthy to go down. And the book of Revelation said, they looked under the earth, they looked above the earth, and nobody was found worthy. They'll lose the seals of that book. Hey, but Jesus said, give me those keys. They belong to me. You know what Jesus said? Those belong to me. And it belongs to you today, friend. Anything that Satan has robbed you of, it belongs to you. It don't belong to him. Don't you let him steal that. You say, it's all just like that. Well, it might be. If you proclaim it today, praise God. I'm not saying name it, proclaim it. But I'm saying today, if you tell God, I'm ready to have my joy back. I'm ready to have my peace back. He'll give it to you. Oh, Lord. It may take you a little bit of work. I don't believe it was easy for Jesus to go down and get those keys of death, hell, and the grave. Oh, Lord. I don't believe it was easy, but he done it. Amen. And I believe if you said in your mind today that you want those keys, amen, and you want everything back that he stole from you, you can kick him out. I'd like to kick him out today, wouldn't you? If I know there's somebody, praise God, this is funny a little bit. I, but me and my wife seen something the other day, and, and some of you going to know what this means, but y'all just keep it still. I, but me and my wife was the other day, she said, that belongs to me. Somebody's got something that belongs to me. They're wearing something that belongs to me. I said, don't, don't worry about it. Just forget about it. Let God, praise God, let them have it. If they want to steal something like that, let them have it. You know what? I'm not going to let your devil have no more. I ain't got no power over him, but my God does. Hey, what are you thinking about here? You done lost, amen? Are you thinking right now, you examining yourself, amen? What is it that you've lost? What is it that the devil's taken from you? Hey, you say it, the devil and the flesh, they work hand in hand. Hey, everything may not be the devil, but it's my rotten flesh. The thing, can you still smile when I say the name of Jesus? Amen. When you first get married or you first have a baby, if somebody mentions that name, we'll smile teeth to teeth, ear to ear. You'll never be able to see enough of us. But right about now, if somebody says Jesus, it makes me want to say praise the Lord. Hey, I want to feel that joy in my heart. I know what he's done for me, friend. He's restored. The Bible said, I believe in the book of Joel, all the things that the canker worm and the palmer worm has destroyed, he said, I will restore that. God wants to restore you today, friend, that you can be a fresh, you can be a new like you once were. Amen. Maybe you never smiled. Maybe God's never stirred your heart up. I don't know. Today would be a good day. You know what belongs to you? Salvation belongs to you, my 
my friend. If you're not saved today, salvation belongs to you. He came to whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. I read to you this morning, the same shall be saved. Amen. That belonged to me at 26 years of age. Amen. I realized that I needed a touch from heaven. I realized that God had something I needed that had been robbed from me. I didn't have no joy in my life. Amen. I went to the foot of a little mountain in Brumley Gap. I was planning to take my own life. When I got back there, praise the Lord. When I got back there with that shotgun, God said, don't do that. I was a lost man. But God didn't want me to do that. And you say you went through that. You better believe I went through that. I was ready to get it over with. I was done with this world. But you know what? They was something I overlooked. Bless His name. They was something I overlooked that God made away from me. Bless his name. God made a way for me that I could smile again. God made a way for me that I could have joy in my heart again. I didn't have to be like this world. I didn't have to be in the, the hog swine and praise God, the hog pit of this world. But God said, don't do that. Oh, me, a lost boy. It's still maybe four or five years before I got saved. But I can remember that. I'll never forget being back there thinking this is going to be it. Somebody's going to have to carry me across this creek. I ain't walking back across it no more. I'm tired of life. I'm tired of Paul. Tired of failing tired of these things going wrong but you know what praise the Lord (laughs) bless his holy name God thought enough of me he wanted to see me smile again hey God wants to see you smile again you say I'm going through a big trial I know that I know you're going through a trial but you don't have to let your joy leak out God will help you with that my friend things may be different than they once were but God he still wants to give you that back can you say under your breath that belongs to me and you're thinking about it. The times, oh Lord, the times I talked to a man this week, I said I'd give every bit, a little bit of money I got just to be able to sit down with my mom and daddy. My mother's passed on, but just to be able to sit down with them on Christmas morning, the memories that was, how important that was to me. But you know what? I can't have that here. But one day I'll be able to be with them. Praise the Lord. One day I'll be able to be with them. You know why? Because I got my mind made on heaven. I'm determined that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Has Satan robbed you of something? I'm about through. Has Satan robbed you of something? When I look at that cross, I thought about this this morning. That really belonged to me, did it not? Maybe not that one, but the cross belonged to me. But Jesus took that in my place. That cross belonged to you, my friend. That cross belonged to every one of us. When Jesus went in Barabbas, they let Barabbas free. The murder, one of guilty of insurrection, that was me. Praise God. I love that middle man, don't you? The one that took my place on that cross. If I could stand and proclaim, praise God, that was my cross. It belonged to me. I could stand up today and say, that belonged to me. That belonged to me. But Jesus said, I'll take your place, Father. He said, I'll lay my life down for those that are lost today. For those, if they close their eyes and they died, amen. A lot of sudden deaths going on in this world. If they close their eyes and died, in hell they lift up their eyes. And if you die in your sins, Jesus said, amen. I guess it's right. Jesus said it must be right. It's in red in my book. If you die in your sins, he said, where I'm at, you cannot come. You say, I don't believe in that. You will one day, my friend, when hell is burning you, when weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, amen. Hell don't belong to me, friend. Hell belongs to the devil and his angels, the Bible said. It was made for the devil and his angels. Don't belong to me. But you know what? My, my. If you refuse to let Jesus take your cross, you will belong to hell. And you'll be a possession of that place until it's cast into the lake of fire. The second day, the cast into the lake of fire. I'd hate to be there in that day. Oh, Lord, I'd hate to be there. I'd rather smile today. I'd rather receive salvation today. As she comes to the music, if you will, sis. I'd rather receive it today, wouldn't you? As you begin to think, amen. As you begin to think, and we're going to cut this short. As you begin to think about the things you once had. (laughs) David began to think about the things he once had. I want you to read the whole story. I didn't want to preach the whole thing and take an hour. But David, he said, God, you want me to pursue? God said, pursue. And they went after these things. Amen. And it said that they gathered everything. They didn't miss anything. They didn't lose anything. They were able to recover all, the Bible said. They were able to recover all. Now, let's look at the beginning of that. David coming back, finding stuff gone. The same way you are right now, wondering how long it's been since you had a civil conversation with your cousin, with your uncle, with your mom, whatever. Whatever it is that Satan's robbing you of. If David would have said, forget it, boys. I'm going back to the world. I don't, I'm not going to fight again. I'm tired of fighting. But David thought enough of, his, of those people around him. And you know what? It's going to affect those around you. If David would have said, I, I don't know. I, I'm not going not to go after it. That would have hurt everybody. 
Sin is so selfish, my friend. Sin don't just help you. If I decided to go out tonight and get drunk, praise God, and chase a bunch of whores around, you know what? That wouldn't just hurt me. That'd hurt everybody. And David said, I'm going to my mind made up. God, if you'll let me pursue this, I'm going after it. And God said, pursue it. It's going to affect everybody. This is more than just, this is so much bigger than just you. This is so much bigger than your house. This is so much bigger than your job. Amen. So much bigger than that. And David began to go out. I'm glad he did that. Everybody stand if you, she begins to play. As David began to go out, he encouraged himself in the Lord first. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know God gave me this message last night. Maybe it gave me a thought earlier, but last night he told me to preach it. I don't know who you are. Maybe it's just me, friend. But let me just go ahead and tell you. Been a while since some of you had some joy. You say you're meddling. No, I ain't meddling. God called me to be the pastor here. I'm trying to feed you. Been a while since some of you had joy. I know you're coming. I know you, you, you love the Lord, but it's been a while since you've been happy about it. Been a while since you had joy in your heart, friend. It's God's will that you have joy. He sent me today to tell you to pursue after it. Pursue after that smile. Pursue after happiness in the Lord, not the world. There may be pleasure in sin for a season, friend, but that season ends in hell. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. When he said peace, has it been a while since you felt that? Has it been a while? You know what you need to say? You can even say it out loud. It don't matter. That belongs to me. Praise God. You can proclaim that. I did not make it up. David had to realize that stuff belonged to him. It didn't belong to, praise God, the Amalekites. It didn't belong to all of them. And when he stood up over the Amalekites, they took him out pretty quick. My, my, if you stand up on the gospel on Jesus Christ and believe He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after Him. What the book says, He's a rewarder, a friend. Praise God. I don't know your heart today. If you're not saved, can I tell you, salvation is for you. It belongs to you. Salvation belongs to you. Amen. He made a way that whosoever come to Him, you can be saved today. You say, what's that mean? You can be forgiven of your mistakes. You can be forgiven of the things that you've done wrong. You say, you never make mistakes. I done told you I make more than everybody probably. And I've got to come back to God and say, help me, Lord. Give me the joy. Renew within me. Oh, Lord. As David said, renew within me. Restore within me the joy of my salvation. Restore within me, God, the joy. Do you feel the joy today, my friend? Do you feel that joy in your heart? Do you know you're saved today? Are you just playing a game? Praise God. Are you just playing a game? Do you know you're saved? There's a lot of people playing church today. They're just playing the game. They ain't really got the God in their heart. Is there anybody that don't want to play no more? You ready to come pray? Thank God for these. Anybody else like to come pray? Anybody else? This altar is open, friend. Anybody else? Praise God. If you're lost today, hell ain't going to be worth it. I promise you, hell ain't going to be worth it, my friend. Praise God. Do you want to be saved today? You say, you can save me? Absolutely not. I can't save a butterfly. God can save you. God can save you if you won't repent, if you could come to Him. My, my godly sorrow leadeth me into repentance. Oh, Lord. The grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us, teaching us, that denying ungodly and worldly lusts, we shall live soberly, soberly and righteously in this present world. Amen. Anybody like to be saved today? Keep your head about it right closed. Anybody like to raise their hand and say, Preacher, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not saved. I need to be saved. Amen. Anybody like to lift a hand up, put it right back down. I'm not talking to nobody about this. It's between you and the Lord. I'll not come to you. I promise God ain't told me to do that. I'll not come to you, but I'll pray throughout the day, throughout the night, throughout the week, throughout the months that God would help you, my friend. My, my. The grace of God brings salvation hath appeared to all men. It's appearing to you right now. It's right in front of you right now. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it, friend? Don't hide that light under a bushel. 
few more seconds. Anybody like to put your hand up, put it right back down. Anybody? Praise God. I want to know that your blood is not on my hands. You say you're scaring me? Nope. I'll show you where you can find that at in the Bible. Your blood is not going to be on my hands. I've given you the opportunity. If you'd like to pray as we leave whenever, I'll stay over. I usually stay over. I'd like to come in here and pray after the service. You're more than welcome to come pray. If you've got questions about the Lord, praise God, you asked me about Jesus. You may not get to eat lunch today, but I surely tell you about him. I tell you about a man that told me everything that I did. Is this not to Christ? Praise God. Father in heaven, we come to you today. I thank you, Lord, for the music. I thank you, God, for those that are praying. I thank you that you spoke this message to my heart. What belongs to me, God, that belongs to me. Those belong to David, his wives and his children. God, that belong to him. I'm glad you told him to pursue and you're telling us today, don't let the devil rob you of your smile. Don't let the devil keep you aggravated all the time and mad and hateful to everybody. God don't need that, friend. God needs somebody to smile. God needs somebody to show love and compassion. God, forgive our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Oh, Lord, that's the hard part. Father, we thank you for the service. We thank you for everything that you've done for all of us. I thank you for speaking to my heart especially. The things that Satan has tried to rob me of. The same thing, God, that the...